Now, it really gets wild the next day. So someone sends me, uh, this guy is, is literally live streaming, driving up the trails on Hunter, not, not up a Jeep trail, up the ski trails on Hunter Mountain to drive back up to the lean-to to remove the graffiti. Apparently, he's, he's had a change of heart now. So <laughs> he's going up there with a, with a battery-powered power sander, and he gets up to the lean-to, and he's live streaming the whole thing. He's, uh, he's kind of, you know, doing a selfie video. He's kind of ranting and raving. And he's, he's drawing equivalencies between the carved graffiti on the lean to and what he did. And he's kind of backing off because originally he was a little apologetic. Inside the line, the Catskills. So welcome everyone to episode 13 of Inside the Line, the Catskills. I'm your host, Tosh. Tonight I had a great chat with Mike from the ADK Fun Police, uh, an Instagram phenomenon. I had to leave out the Catskills histories because he was on a tight schedule. So we, I decided to record the Catskills history afterwards. So let's get into some Catskills history, eh? Tonight's Catskill history is about fire towers and the Catskills. Now, we all know the fire towers, of course, through the fire tower challenge mostly, but the fire towers offer the best views in the Catskills, 360 degree views. We all know them, hopefully. If you don't, check them out, but remember to leave no trace, as always. The fire towers were constructed for forest fire prevention and control in the Catskills. Um, 23 towers were built between 1908 and 1950. The towers fell into disuse by the 1970s as fire spotting from airplanes and satellite became more effective, and the towers were gradually decommissioned. The Hunter Mountain Fire Tower was the last to be taken out of service in 1990. Most of the towers have been dismantled, but five have remained open to the public for observation. Hunter Mountain, Balsam Lake, Overlook, Tremper, and Red Hill. Red Hill's one of my favorites. When the Catskill Park was created in 1885, one of the state's earliest missions was the control and the suppression of forest fires, which has long ravaged the land and damaged local crops and property. Wardens were hired to patrol railroad lines where stray ashes from steam engines often ignited surrounding brush and investigate reports of fires started by logging or quarrying operations on state land. The FFGC, which is Forest, Fish, and Game Commission, which was the DEC's predecessor, was understaffed and un unable to focus on fire prevention. Hmm, sounds like this day and age. Several fires during droughts in 1903 and 1908 caused thousands of dollars in damages and led to public calls for better fire control efforts. In December 1908, FFGC heads James Whipple sought advice from agencies in other states. His counterpart in Maine, E. E. Ring, recommended that he use the strategically placed observation towers like they did in Maine, stating that one man located at a station up high will do far more effective work in discovering and locating fires than 100 men patrolling the ground. An informal system of observation towers, which already existed on some summits, like Slide, and I forgot the other ones, maybe Graham at the time, provided excellent places to station the first trained observers who could see vast portions of the range in, and report location of new fires quickly via dedicated telephone lines. The area around Hunter has historically been very fire prone due to the heavy logging. Remember that? I'll have that in the histories later on, and that might be an episode. And less than one square mile or 2.6 square kilometers of virgin forest remains on Hunter Mountain. All the rest of it was logged. That was a big logging area. Lightning strikes also caused fires up there. The following year, forest rangers built the first Hunter Mountain fire tower, which was a 40-foot structure made from three trees on level ground near the summit. It was one of the first fire towers looked out in the Catskills. Observers stood on an open platform and had to first live in a nearby tent until a cabin was built. I've been on a fire platform up in Vermont. Amazing, beautiful feeling like no other. It, it definitely beats out that cabin with the windows. It's just amazing. It's like you're on a diving board. Really cool stuff. Um, in 1996, Hunter and the other four towers were added to the historic lookout register and then to the national register the following year. Local committees raised money for the repair, and in 1999, the Tower on Overlook Mountain was the first to be reopened to the public. Wow, that's... 1999 is uh, 22 years ago? Holy crap. 
Um, the Catskill Center for Conservation and Development has worked hard in partnership with the New York State DEC since the early 1990s to ma maintain the remaining five historic fire towers and interpret them seasonally for hikers and visitors. Through the dedication of countless volunteers, volunteers, we thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. You are the heart of the Catskills. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank all your volunteers as many times as you can. As well as assistance and support from the DEC staff, the last of the five remaining Catskill Towers were restored and reopened to the public in 2000. Since then, volunteers-based committees organized for each of the towers have continued to maintain structures and men in Casey renovate observers' towers as well. Thank you, volunteers, once again. Today, a network of more than 100 volunteers also acts as summer stewards by greeting visitors on weekend from May through October. Some pretty cool stuff of the fire towers. A lot I got to research even more because I know there was towers on other mountains, but they were not observation towers. So I'll have to look into that. Um, once again, thank the volunteers for their hard work on those fire towers. They get a lot of traffic. They've gotten a lot of traffic from the fire tower challenge, which was a rough time. Thank you, Lori Rankin. I believe she is the FFLA Forest Fire Lookout Association. She's part of that, and she runs the stuff going on in the Catskills for the fire tower. So thank you guys for doing all that you do. Go into the top of the, of the night, which is Mike and the Adirondack Fun Police. Enjoy. All right. So uh, we are live. Welcome to episode 12, 13, I don't, I don't remember, of Inside the Line, the Catskills. I'm here with Mike from the Adirondack Fun Police or the ADK Fun Police, an Instagram phenomenon. Would you say that is, Mike? That's, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, my expectations. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's apparently we'll, we'll talk about your, your job as the Adirondack fund police, uh, in a, in a few minutes. Um, but I would like, uh, to thank our sponsor, scenic route guiding, scenic route guiding, whatever you want, Sarah, I'm sick and tired of doing it. I'm going to do it my way, Sarah. Um, so scenic route guiding, thanks for sponsoring us. Um, if you're ready to hit the trails, make sure you take the scenic route. Our guides here are to help you with your goals, big or small. Check out the scenic route guiding and gear rentals on Instagram and Facebook for more information. And if you mention the podcast, you can get 10% off. Use the code word mountain lion. Remember that mountain lions exist everywhere, but nobody can catch them. But I would also thank Katrina Weinink, Darren White, and John Comiskey for being monthly sponsors. And I would like to thank someone for donating five coffees, which is incredible. Thank you guys uh, for donating to the show. Uh, hopefully we can make this bigger and extend the word out of, of everything we're trying to do and trying to help out the, the trails and stuff. Um, so, Mike, do you have anything to drink tonight, buddy? Unfortunately, not yet. I'm still in the office finishing up a, a long day here. And, uh, you know, I have an a empty decanter I've been needing to fill up, but... Uh, you know, it, it, unfortunately, it's empty for now. So nothing, nothing yet tonight. Okay, good. Don't have it at, at, at work. Yeah, <laughs> it's an OSHA violation. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm having. Uh, it's called Beaver Kill Bourbon, and eggnog. Oh, absolutely so it, phenomenal! It is, it is eggnog season. I got. I got to pick, pick, pick myself up some. Oh yeah, it is definitely. I've been craving eggnog for a while, and, and they have it right in front of me when I when I go to work and stuff. So I'm just like, I'm getting it makes it easy yeah and this beaver kill bourbon is from is local down in roscoe towards us and uh oh, nice. it's phenomenal it's like cinnamon and maple syrup and everything it's absolutely delicious so i was gonna do the the history tonight's history is going to be fire towers but i'm going to record that after a talk with mike so i can we can get through that stuff and uh just get the fun stuff out of the way first so um That's mike good. uh Adirondack Fun Police, um, Instagram phenomenon, helped out in many times in, in different places on the trails. Uh, Mike, introduce yourself, sir. Yeah, so so my name is Mike. I, I go incognito, so I you know it's kind of the uh, mystique of the account, and uh, just just uh, kind of kind of started that way and still by the way. But yeah, from uh, originally from uh, foothills of the Adirondacks up uh, Glens Falls, grew up you know all, all across the park at a family place up north outside of Tupper Lake. Grew up uh, all over Lake George. So the Adirondacks are, you know, they're, they're, they're my backyard. So it's uh, always been a place I, uh, you know, near and dear to my heart. And, uh, you know, the Catskills too. My parents actually live in the Catskills. I was down at Hunter for, uh, for Thanksgiving. So uh, Catskills are uh, not uh, are, are a close second to me. I, I haven't yet come up with the time to start the Catskills Fun Police, but I've been dragged, <laughs> dragged that way a few times so far. <laughs> well, 
you're doing an incredible job. Um, and that's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad you actually uh, like part of the cat skill. So that's good. Absolutely. So you at least, you at least know some of the cat skills. So that's the good. The land. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mike, do you, do you specifically hike in the Adirondacks and, and do you hike at all? Uh, yeah, we, my, my wife and I do a lot of hiking. Um, you know, we're chipping away at the 46 We're we're in no rush, but, uh, generally we, we try to uh, avoid the higher altitudes, you know, the crowded hikes in the summer, uh, winter is really my, my hiking season. Uh, you Damn know, uh, we, we, we try, try to keep away from the crowds. We, we, we got into canoeing pretty good in the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, whether it's canoeing or the lower altitudes, that's where you'll find me in the summer, but the winter I, I, I get up higher above the, uh, the higher elevations. That's great. That's, um, uh, perfect because, you know, I've heard horror stories up there in the Adirondacks with the high peaks. Yeah. Just, uh, you get up at four 30 in the morning, you know, it's just not my cup of tea if I don't have to <laughs> four 30 in the morning, you might get a parking spot. You might not. That's true. But maybe more like three of these days, I guess that's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a crazy past two years. And then even before that, when it, when it started, but the past two years have been insane. So it really has, you know, I, <clears throat> uh, early on, or I guess, uh, kind of spring, early summer after the pandemic, I actually, I, I got some great hiking in because everyone was staying home. I'm like, I'm, I'm going up there. <laughs> you know, there, was, there was, there was no one out there. It was, uh, it was, it was get up at a reasonable hour and uh, get out on the trail and get to get down before, uh, before uh, darkness. So uh, yeah, it was kind of uh, interesting, kind of, really surreal to have some beautiful days up there and have beaches absolutely empty. Uh, really, really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to judge people and single people out, but you know, the, the all the city people come up to the Adirondacks and the Catskills and stuff like that, and yeah. having the biggest city in in the United States, three four hours away from you is tough, and it does crowd the places. So having that That's time, true. I got to admit, having that time where we had, you know, the peaks to ourselves and stuff like that was really awesome. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, so but um, people start to come back and, and and get out there again. Um, but you know, as they, like 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 I say, you know, you can kind of point to the account as uh, you know, as long as people are are d- doing it right, you know, being responsible, being safe, you know, the, the more the merrier, but it's the, you know, these, if you get 1% of the people that are, you know, doing things improperly, you know, they really have an exponential negative impact. So it's a, uh, it's kind of a, a fair appraisal of, uh, you know, what we've, um, what we try to do in, in terms of education. Exactly. Well, that's, that's a perfect way to say it. Um, so what exactly got you to do this? Yeah, it's a good question. So, um, it, we really fun. The fun place started as a kind of a Reddit thing early on. Um, you know, we would see people post things on the, the Adirondacks Reddit or the hiking Reddit, um, where they're really doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, for an exa- a common example that comes up is someone flying a drone in a wilderness area or, you know, s- stacking rocks, uh, you know, where they shouldn't be stacking rocks and things like that. And, you know, people would generally respond to people who would do these posts and say, hey, listen, like, you know, you shouldn't do that. It's, it's against the rules or it's against the law or it's just, you know, not, not, a, not a leave no trace thing to do. And sometimes the response would be, would be negative. You know, these people would act like they were being personally attacked because, you know, th- their, their behavior was, was being pointed out. And so it kind of started as a joke. There's me and maybe two or three other people on Reddit. Where we're like, oh, I guess, guess we're just the fun police. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start it. You know, let's, <laughs> let's have some fun. And it was never supposed to be more than, you know, 10, 20 people just kind of being curmudgeons behind the scenes. <laughs> the next thing I know, I've got three, four, 500 members of the subreddit and people are active. You know, they're posting uh, examples of things they see. They're posting memes. They're, they're asking questions, you know, and it really started blowing up. And I'm like, huh, like, okay, this started as one thing and it's, it's, becoming something else really completely organically. And it was really, um, you know, pretty amazing to watch, you know, about a month or so in when you're hitting about, you know, the, the, the multiple hundreds of followers, I said, all right, let's, let's take it to Instagram. Let's take it to ground zero of the uh, you know, social <laughs> media and influencer land and uh, see, see if we can do some good over there. And it's, uh, you know, from there, it's really, really continued to blow up. Awesome. That is great. You see, I, I like, you know, I didn't find out I wasn't a big Instagram kind of guy. Um, and that's where, you know, I've taken my, my page to and stuff like that. My, my inside the lens, uh, podcast. And I, I saw some of your stuff and I saw your post about Hunter, which we'll get into later. Yeah. And I'm just like this guy. And I look at your stuff. I'm like, this guy's awesome. I'm like, do you, do you make your own memes? Uh, most of them I do. Nice. Nice. And most of them I do. I got a good program and I'll, you know, I'll go through some templates and, uh, try to, try to, try to see what works, you know, probably about 
25% of them actually make it on there. I've, I've got a few people, you know, my, my wife included that all, I'll, I'll ask their opinions and see like, is this, is this funny? This is funny to me. Is this funny to you? You know, nice. Uh, see if my sense of humor translates, but yeah, they're, they're generally, you know, some, some of them will be, will be shared. Some of them come from other accounts, but a lot of it is, is organic homegrown memes. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> That is that is great, and and that goes a, f- a pretty far away with a meme. I gotta admit, any any Karen stuff is like that. People get triggered, or they get they love it. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And I I am I I'm all about kicking the Karens down unless they're navigational Karens. So. Exactly, and that's been you know not not to digress too much, but that's one been one thing I kind of uh, struggle with, and, and you know I I really it, it's a, a point where there's really we're missing some guidance from I guess some of the uh, land managers and authorities is. You know, I'm telling people go out there and kick Karens, but don't kick navigational or official Karens. And, you know, generally it's pretty obvious to see, you know, you, know, go, you go up Cascade or Algonquin, you know, the official Karens, they're gigantic. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm just, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm dreading the day where someone sends me a video of them knocking down, you know, a, a navigational Karen above 4,000 feet or above 5,000 feet. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm worried about it. I, uh, I don't, the funny thing, I don't, I don't see that, that happening. I mean, I hope not. I, I got to admit that you, I mean, a, a common person can tell the difference between a art art with quotations, sure, sure. Karen, and, you know, a navigational massive Karen that'll guide you through eight feet of snow. <laughs> that's true. That, that, and that's generally what I tell people is when you know, you know, you, exactly. you know, it's, it's something on a, on a herd path in the back country, you know, might be questionable, but your, your official, you know, maintained Karens, they're, they're pretty obvious. That's a, that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you looking looking at your your page, you have over almost four thousand followers, man. That is insane. It's, I got like hundred and fifty, so I'm just like, and then other people, you know, I, some of my other podcast friends have, you know, like three, four hundred, four, almost four thousand. That is insane. Um, did this take take off like quickly? Did it happen like like snap? Yeah. Um, th- there was probably, I'd say there was a few waves, you know, generally it's, it's pretty steady growth, but there's been a few kind of catalysts, um, that have really propelled the, the growth. Um, you know, the obvious one early on was just, just coming to Instagram, did a first post, shared it, um, on my personal account, I had a few people that I interacted with, you know, that were kind of similar minded and I, I followed them and they had pretty big followings and they shared a couple things. And so I, I got to a uh, thousand followers, I'd say pretty quickly. After that, you know, like I said, there, there's catalysts, you know, whether it's a, you know, what, an especially good meme that gets shared a few times, brings in some people, um, you know, and, and something we started doing early on, this was all, there was a lot of memes and a lot of commentary, but it almost turned into, I guess, news in a way, or it's kind of like quasi journalism in that, uh, you know, when the AMR up in the Adirondacks implemented their uh, permit system, you know, we had a lot of commentary on that. We did a deep dive into what the permits are, you know, what's right about them, what's wrong about them. And that got a lot of traction too. So yeah, there's been a few uh, fits and starts where we that have really pushed us forward and, and up to these uh, you know, really, really crazy numbers. It's, it's a lot of people. Yeah. I'm looking at, at your pages and I love it. I mean, how, how much fun did you have with the, uh, the guy driving the Jeep up to uh, the Marcy dam? That was, that was a blast. I mean, that was really, that happened, I think last, it was last summer. I don't know exactly when, but it was right when, you know, it was one of the catalysts to, to really starting the, the fun place was bringing attention to things like that because, you, you know, it was, it was just such a, such a wild occurrence. I mean, who, who does that, you know, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, we, we, we had a lot of fun with that. It definitely got a lot of attention and that's actually one of our, our new, uh, new merch designs. We incorporated that into a, a design on some t-shirts and stuff. So that's been, that's been a good seller. It's uh, it's, it's one of my, one of my favorites. So sweet. So I didn't, well, I will talk about that later. Your, your merch thing. I didn't know you had a merch. That's, that's wicked. Brand um, new last, last uh, week or so we, we came out. Awesome. That is so cool. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, so what do you think got it going so fast? I'm, I'm guessing the, the, the funny with the serious I'm guessing. Yeah, that, that's, that's, um that's a pretty good way to put it. I think, you know, I think we tapped into a lot of frustration. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who, who live in the park or who don't live in the park, but they love the park. There's a lot of people with vested interests. And, 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 you know, I say the park, you know, this is all every Adirondack centric, but we really share so much with the Catskills, with the White Mountains, with the Green Mountains, and even the national parks. Um, you know, these issues aren't just Adirondack issues. They might be amplified in certain areas, but these are really universal issues. And there's a lot of people in this country um, that, that really care about our public lands. You know, public lands are, are, are really sacred to people and they really, you know, they're, they're part of their identity. So I think I tapped into some frustration 
um, that people have with, you know, whether you call it disrespect of public lands or abuse of public lands, um, where people kind of latched on to the kind of irreverent tone, the kind of, you know, angsty or, 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 or you know, frustration that we, uh, we tap into and, and we kind of put a, a humorous spin on it. So I think we had a lot of people, you know, that shared the sentiments of, of what we were doing. And then I think once we got going, once we had those initial followers, you know, I think some people actually started to look for us for, for, for substance. You know, I've had a number of people message me and say, hey, you know, like, I didn't know this was something I should think about. I didn't know that, you know, maybe I should carry, you know, extra batteries or that I shouldn't rely on my phone for, for <laughs> life. you know, something like that's made more common sense. But, you know, uh, some, some people don't know these things, you know, people start, they got to start somewhere or, you know, I didn't know I should leave my jeans at home, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> yes. so we, we definitely turned a corner a little bit um, into into some things of substance and education like that, uh, and I think that's that's further compounded our growth. Yeah, and and what better way to reach out to people with through a meme? <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. And and education, like right right now, you know, I've I've done a lot of stuff in the past couple of years with volunteering, and uh, you know, I I hate to brag, but I'm I was the second vice president of the Catskill Thirty Five Hundred Club. Okay, and the, the the topic I would bring up is education because some of these people see a post on on Facebook or Instagram and they're like I want to go there and they have no clue what to do. You, you hit the nail on the head and that's you know it's kind of become uh, an unofficial motto or a mantra of mine in doing this is you know education and enforcement. You know a lot of the people I interact with you know where they're doing something wrong whether it's a, a drone user taking off from wilderness or again someone stacking rocks or something like that you know, I'd say 75, 80, 90% of people, they just don't know, you know, there's no easy way for them to find out, you know, am I in wilderness right now? Can I launch my drone? Or, you know, am I, am I on a, can I have my dog here with me or no? Should I have it on a leash or not? Um, there's just not a lot of, I mean, granted, you, you can, you can find the answer if you Google it, but these are kind of things that people don't <laughs> know whether they should Google or not. You know, the, the, I don't want to make excuses for people. The, the answers are out there if you look for them. But people, you know, they just don't know. And we need to make it easy for them to know, to figure figure out the, the answers to these questions. Um, and for those people that aren't going to listen, well, we, we need enforcement. We need rangers in the back country. We need, you know, front country uh, infrastructure too, uh, to, to back them up. Because um, then that's how things are going to get done. And, you know, those are, you know, in my opinion, the first line of defense. We need to focus on those things before we do any sort of permits or access restrictions or anything like that, because I don't think we've tried education enforcement. I don't think we've given those avenues the, the justice um, they need, you know, before we start looking at these more draconian measures. Yeah. And luckily, you know, we do have people stepping up to the plate for the education part, like um, the Adirondack 46ers club. Definitely. Um, they're trailhead stewards and they're summit stewards. I believe they do do that. Um down here, we got the Catskill 3500 Club, who has put a lot of time into um, uh, stewards of the trailheads. That's a big thing that's just starting out for us. Um, Summit stewards down here are, are huge. Actually, I'm going to be having a um, an interview with uh, one of the Summit stewards. Uh, her name is Myra. I met her at Slide, and it'll be a great interview. Definitely. Um, they, they, you're absolutely right. I think the, the Summit stewards, the trailhead stewards do so much. Um, you know, I've actually had a, a lot of uh, my early kind of source material and, uh, you know, the, the, the early things that we were talking about came directly from some summit stewards who I think, uh, you know, had some frustration with the things they saw. And, uh, you know, granted, they, they, they do a, a great service in, in educating people, but there's, you know, there's that very, very slim minority of people that don't care that, you know, maybe tell them to, you know, go, go take, take a hike or something, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there, definitely there, there's a lot of, a lot of good being done by a lot of good people who, who, who care for, for our land. So uh, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people think, you know, like uh, they see stuff on the side of the trail, you know, that's 1% of the 99% of hikers, you know, like, like leave no trace and stuff like that. And they're littering and stuff. You, you got to admit of all the people, it's, it's like a 1%. And, but that, on a small three foot wide trail is enough to, to ruin the day. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's, it's the kind of activity where any, any human trace, I guess is, uh, you know, no pun intended, but um, is really amplified. And you, you take, you get a thousand hikers. If, you know, maybe 10 people are, 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 are that person, it's, it's going to be noticeable and it's going to, it's going to detract from the experience and yeah. sustainability of the trails. Absolutely. And that, and that's why we got funny people like you to, to, 
drill it into their heads of what to do and what not to do. <laughs> it's working. It's working. I think it's working. So that's I, I good. hope so. I hope so. So what is uh with, with all that's been going on and stuff like that in the past couple of years, what has been the hottest like topic that you've been been engaging in? Yeah. Um a few a few come to mind. Um, you know, a lot of it is just general, you know, leave no trace principles. Um, you know, dealing with uh you know, uh, the, the rock stacks obviously are huge. Um, one thing that was an early hot button issue for us was, was drone usage. You know, the rule is you, you can't launch or land a drone in areas designated as wilderness, canoe, or primitive areas. Or, or if, the, if it's on private land, you can't launch if the landowner, land manager prohibits it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the best, most photogenic areas for drones happen to be wilderness areas. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. you know, w- whether it's someone launching on top of a high peak or something like that, uh, th- that's definitely been a big issue. You know, a lot of the issues, you know, just general uh, preparation, uh, the importance of a headlamp and extra batteries, uh, the dangers of cotton, you know, th- the importance of signing in the trail register, a lot of just nuts and bolts stuff and just really hitting it over and over again to drive it home to people. Some of the more notable issues I'd say maybe maybe the more um, the, the hot button issues that maybe don't you know there may be more like one and done or, or, or kind of single serving issues. It's like so AMR was a big one, the AMR permit system. Oh yeah. Um, so that that was huge. It's it's still still huge, and I encourage everyone to to pay attention to what's going on there. You know, hold hold, uh, hold everybody responsible. Thing in conjunction with that, they put up a bunch of uh, reflectors, delineators that, that actually blocked off um, some parking areas on Route 73. So, you know, things like that got a lot of attention. Um, obviously, the, the Marcy Dam Jeep. Um, it's t- tough to pick just one issue because it really is. The second I think things are quieting down, something else pops up. So it's, it's really uh, one thing after another. Yeah, it's, you know, it was probably the, the fall foliage. And now it's going to quiet down for a month or two. And then all of a sudden it's going to be snowshoes and stuff like that. That's ex- exactly. Yep. And that's, that's another, another rule we try to hit on is I, I forget what it is now. I think in the high peaks Eastern zone, snowshoes are required if there's, I think it used to be six inches, but now it's eight inches of snow on the trail. Yeah, um, it's eight. Is, is it eight now? Yeah. <laughs> I just changed that. But yeah, they'll actually, I've actually heard of people getting tickets for, for not doing that. So that's something I like to remind people of is, uh, you know, that's, uh, they're not messing around up there. Oh man, there's so many, so many means you could, you could do with this stuff up there. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It really is. It's so crazy. Like I'm just thinking of stuff like, you know, of course it's going to be that, uh, what's his name? Boromir, like brace yourself. Snowshoes are coming. Yep. Yep. I think I might've done something like that. There might be a Boromir on my account somewhere. And I, you mentioned it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it works. And the same thing down here, we have, uh, like brace yourself, uh, questions about spikes are going to be coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's here now. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my window now here in, uh, in Saratoga and there's, there's snow on the ground, you know, and it's, it's, there's been snow on the ground in the higher altitudes for a few weeks now. So that's all been icing up. It's uh, it's winter time in the mountains. That's for sure. Definitely. And that's the best time. Absolutely. So um, with with some of these incidents and stuff like that, I know, I know that Hunter, I, I think you instigated that one as well with, with the Rangers have, have the Rangers like reached out to you or you reached out to the Rangers and they've responded back for, for helping. Uh, yeah. Early on, um, you know, I, I realized, so some rangers have Instagram accounts and I, I saw some that were following me. I'm like, that's, I'm, you know, that's a huge honor to, to me that, that, you know, people are paying attention that there, there's maybe some value in what I'm doing. And I've had some conversations with, with rangers and they're, you know, generally supportive of the, of the, you know, I, I certainly don't speak for them. Um, but, uh, you know, I, th- I think there's some frustration on, on their part as well as oh, yeah. that, you know, there's some of the lack of support they get from the state. You know, the, these rangers, the areas they cover, when you look at them and you talk to them and see the territories that they're responsible for, I mean, it's huge. And we as the public expect so much from them to, you know, to enforce the rules, to come rescue us when we break an ankle, to do, to do so much. Um, you know, we really, we really need more rangers. And, uh, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm deviating on, on a political point there. but <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's perfect, man. I mean, you're, you're bringing up a great point. I mean, the same thing is going on here. These Rangers have so much to cover and so little time with so little yeah. resources. Yeah. But I think, I think they've been generally supportive of, of the messaging. Um, you know, I've had some Rangers ask me to, you know, maybe post, uh, like I did a post recently about, you know, that included the Ranger dispatch number. That's because people were sending me things 
And like, listen, like I can post about them and we can have a laugh about them. But if you really want something to get done, if you see something like some of these behaviors, call the Rangers. Your first call should be Ranger Dispatch, not the ADK Fund Police. You know, call me second, but call the Rangers first because they're going to be the ones that can actually get out there and do something about it. You know, an example comes to mind. Someone was uh, hiking Cascade probably about a year or so ago and sent me a picture of a, a whole a full fledged campsite. They're having a fire. They had a tent right on the summit of Cascade. Oh, and wow. You can't do that. So I said, so I ended up reaching out to Ranger Dispatch myself. And uh, by the time that person had gotten down the mountain, a ranger had arrived to go up top and, and uh, take care of the, their campsite. So, you know, the rangers do respond. They do care about these issues and, and these things. Um, you know, so I'd say don't, you know, don't hesitate about it. if you see something, you know, an illegal campsite, illegal fire, um, you know, someone doing something they shouldn't be doing back there, let the rangers know because they, you know, they track this stuff and, and they can respond. And, you know, even though they are, they're overworked, they, they do care about, uh, about doing a good job. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, I, I would say to definitely take the, your local ranger dispatch number, add it to your phone. You know, like, it comes in handy. Oh yeah. Every, every hiker should probably have that for, for in case of emergency and for other yeah. topics as well. Yeah, and, you know, know, a lot of people think, you know, talking to those people or like, people telling them to mind their own business, you know, you're helping out the Rangers, number one. And if you get the the contact with the Rangers, um, you're not being a snitch. You're helping out the land. They're helping out the wilderness. And you know what? Th that's something I've given a lot of thought to um, because in so many other aspects of our lives, you know, we wouldn't hesitate to call the police or to tell someone, Hey, stop it. You know, if you saw someone spray painting, you know, your, 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 your office or something like that, you would do something about it. Or, or, or if you saw someone like throwing, you know, nails into the road, you do something about it. You know, this really, in my opinion, it's not any, any different. Um, you know, I was actually, we were down in, uh, in the Catskills over Thanksgiving and we did a little, little walking around uh, the Platte Clove uh, area Ooh, and great place. A, a, entire uh, shattered bottle of Svedka vodka on the rock. And I'm like, you know what, like, this is no worse than someone doing this in a grocery store, in my opinion. So, you know, I'd say to, to the extent people might be uh, hesitant to contact the authorities because they see something in the woods, you know, look at it this way. It, it's no different from protecting, you know, any other public land or, or your own property uh, to that extent. Uh, you know, don't don't be don't be don't be shy. Yeah, that's what I, I tell people, you know, and, you know, you might get attitude. But in the long run, like I had a, an episode where my friend said, you know, he would be like, you know, the Rangers come in and they would like crazy and then pack everything up and it's just like like that's a great you know that's a great way to do it be like oh i saw saw a ranger back in the parking area you know one thing uh, on that point um and, and you might you might be interested or your, your listeners might uh a strategy that i i, I did some some uh a post about recent fairly recently was is it's called authority of the resource and i won't go into it um a ton but it's a it's a it's a, a strategy to engage people who you see doing something whether it's feeding wildlife or, you know, sack and rocks or something, just a way to engage people that's kind of been studied and is really proven to, to, to work and to play off people's own investment in, in public land. So that, that's something, um, you know, that I, I've found be beneficial in engaging people on social media that that is uh, kind of a proven endorsed way to 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 get those messages across constructively. Excellent. I'll have to check that out and I'll have to <laughs> repost it. So, yeah. So, uh, we've been we've been actually talking about this whole time. Uh, do you think uh, the ADK Fund Police is helping out with the public and stuff with the lands? Uh, I, I hope so. <laughs> you know, I, I think it does. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, kind of my mantra is it's education and enforcement and education comes comes first for a reason. Um, you know, I, I've had a, a number of people. I don't know if it's hundreds or tens or how many, but I've had a, a notable amount of people reach out to me and, and tell me that they've learned something from the accounts or, or that they've, they've you know, gotten some benefit from, from the message, whether it's they've been able to communicate with someone else effectively about, you know, educating them about the outdoors or whether they themselves have learned something. Um, you know, I try to read into those things and, and the fact that I'm gaining followers, and not losing them, you know, try to read into that. To, you know, there's really no other metric for, for whether I'm doing something right. There's not a lot of feedback, you know, aside from people who reach out to me. So I, I think looking at that, I, I, I think I'm doing something right. You know, time will tell, but I'm, I'm certainly optimistic that uh, we're, we're having some benefit. I mean, I think you are. I, I've looked back and see, see all those posts and the shirts looking stuff like not today hippie and the skateboarding <laughs> is really funny stuff. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that gets a, a lot of 
a, a meme goes further than just a little typing of something. <laughs> you're, you're exactly right. You know, who, who reads a brochure, right? But a meme takes three seconds and it, it might, you know, pique your interest in something and, uh, you know, branch out to some, some real substantive education. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's awesome. So I'm glad you're, they got this going. So um, the Hunter, John Robling too, if uh, any of our listeners don't remember or haven't heard of this, um, I, an idiot went up to Hunter Mountain, went to the amazing spot on John Rob Lean 2 and graffitied the rock and the lean to. And uh, it started like wildfire when somebody posted it. Um, did you, so I, you remember, I remember you had uh, some involvement with this. You were kind of like one of the, the first to, to get it yeah. going like on fire. So like, how did that all happen? You just see it on so, like. A, a lot of the time, you know, the way I'll come up with it, people will send me something and I'll, I'll do a post about it. So they, that, that's, you know, how a lot of the content uh, c- comes about. Uh, so someone had sent me this picture of, of the lean to, it was posted in one of the Facebook, I think the Catskills trails condition uh, Facebook group. And uh, I'm like, all right, well, it's the Catskills, but this is, this is pretty freaking egregious. Um, you know, I think everyone who follows me will get some benefit at over seeing what's going on. So I post it and I'm like, you know, probably some snarky caption to it. And it just goes, I mean, it was spreading like wildfire fire on Facebook. And I certainly added fuel to that fire in terms of, you know, making people <laughs> aware of this. Now, what this guy did is on top of the lean to uh, the, the lean to graffiti, he had spray painted his Instagram handle, uh, like, like a, like a, a art one that he does. And it wasn't too long after that, that people were able to track down his personal page. Um, part of the reason they were able to do that is that this guy had done the exact same design he did on the rock and the lean to on some boat in Newburgh. So this was his signature mark. So people tracked this guy down and, uh, you know, he responded <laughs> very poorly. Um, instead of maybe taking the post down or just, you know, going, making his account private and, you know, backing off, he starts engaging with people and, uh, you know, there's arguments all over the place. He's on my page. He's on his own page. I don't know if he's on Facebook. So I get to the point. I'm like, all right, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. I, I can't patrol all these comments. People are getting pretty nasty. So I shut down the comments on my page and I'm like, I'm enough of that. Um, but it kept going uh, for, for a while on his page. Um, after that, I, I had uh, uh, through one of the contacts I have who's a ranger in the Adirondacks, uh, got the contact information for a local ranger um, who, who has hunter in his jurisdiction. And I reach out to him and kind of let him know, hey, I think we, I think we've identified the individual who did this. Um, I think we have his personal account. Here's the information that you know. Apparently, they had been aware of the graffiti for about a week, um, and they didn't really have any leads. So I gave him a lead. He was appreciative, and I, th- I thought that was pretty much it. I'm like, oh, and you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Now it really gets wild the next day. So someone sends me uh, this guy is, is literally live streaming driving up the trails on hunter not not up a jeep trail up the ski trails on hunter mountain to drive back up to the lean to to remove the graffiti apparently he's, he's had a change of heart now <laughs> so <laughs> he's going up there with a with a battery powered power sander and he gets up to the lean to and he's live streaming the whole thing he's uh he's kind of you know doing a selfie video he's kind of ranting and raving and he's He's drawing equivalencies between the carved graffiti on the lean to and what he did. And he's kind of backing off because originally he was a little apologetic and contrite, but he's kind of backing off that now. He says, well, I actually don't think I did anything wrong. And <laughs> uh, I think what eventually happens, I think he runs out of battery in his grinder, the, the, the sander. He gets in his car to go back down the mountain. Now, I'm thinking, myself, I'm kind of going back forth. Like, okay, well, what do I do here? I know where he is right now. He's literally broadcasting from the top of the mountain so i call the ranger back and i say hey listen uh this guy's literally on top of hunter mountain right now trying to take the graffiti down he's like really like are you serious i'm like dead serious <laughs> so um from here it's, it's it's my understanding that he uh you know from it you know i didn't speak to that ranger um again until later but it's my understanding that uh you know he got in touch with local local enforcement he let the ski area know and they're waiting for him at the bottom of the mountain now, uh, unfortunately, he didn't quite make it that far. Um, remember, he was driving on the ski slopes and got himself stuck in a, in a snowbank from the snow guns from the, the ski area getting ready to, to open the season. So the rangers have to go up the mountain with, the, with uh, ski area personnel, drag him out of a snowbank. He follows him down the mountain where he's arrested. 
Um, I think he was charged with uh, two or three misdemeanor accounts and had a had a court date uh, coming up in, in, the, in the the village of Hunter, I think. But yeah, uh, you know, long story short, re- not not long ago, I'd say within the last couple of weeks, um, I heard that he was reaching out to people who he engaged with and apologizing, essentially saying, you know, I realized what I did was wrong. You know, I should have done this. And he actually, a few days after that, he actually sent me a message saying essentially that same thing. So lesson learned the hard way, I guess. Um, but certainly a, a, uh, one of the more legendary, uh, <laughs> stories I'd say, if that's a fair phrase. <laughs> Definitely a legendary story. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, when, I didn't know he was live streaming that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he still has them up. I could, I could send you them if you're interested. I, I'm sure he took them down with, uh, you know, hopefully at his, at his attorney's advice, you know, take down the evidence of, of the crime. But, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he had a whole, uh, a whole whole live stream of Instagram stories about him driving up there. You know, it was uh, it was wild. It was uh, it was it was wild. How dumb can you get? Yeah, oh, all for the for the Instagram, all for the gram. Yep, it, it, exactly what it is. Yeah, it's, it's all about that content. He, he was, and that was one of the things he was provoking people with. He was saying, "Oh, I've uh, you know, I, I I've gotten so much attention over this, you know." And, and I think the thing that really set people over the edge was a comment. He started responding by copying and pasting the same responses. And he said, uh, you know, the whole country's understaffed. The state's not going to get me. They're not going to do anything about this. I was like, well, okay, challenge accepted. Um, And they did. So, you know, (laughs) lesson learned, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So my my friend who who has a podcast uh, in the White Mountains reached out to him. And uh, he said, this is like, you know, uh, maybe maybe you did this and you had no clue. And then like, no, 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 you, you, you're an asshole. And then yeah. <laughs> progressed is that way. And he goes, uh, the guy said, I have it right here. I really appreciate your entertaining and kind words. I really mean that I'm okay with being an asshole. It won't happen again. Give you my word. <laughs> yeah. There's kind of weird. Like he would be kind of apologetic like that, but then also say like, I'm a vandal. It's what I do. So it's kind of, you know, I, I think people were kind of a little confused. Like, is this guy, is he, did he learn his lesson? Is he apologetic? You know, I, I don't know, but I think the end result is that, you know, he was, unfortunately it took some public resources and, and a criminal charge to get him there. But uh, yeah, we, we were actually, it was, it was picked up by the times union. Uh, we actually had a, uh, I, was, I was quoted in a, in a story uh, about this issue. It was an above the fold front page uh, story for the times union. So it's uh, definitely there's some, uh, um, some, some attention to be paid out there for, for issues like this. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, a little sensational, but definitely, uh, definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the funny thing is I'm looking on my Instagram. I, I reached out to him a while ago and I think he might've deleted his account. Oh, no kidding. With, yeah, uh, yeah. That is, uh, his personal account or which, which, uh, let's see. He's still up there. One of them. Uh, but like, seriously, I, I reached out to him. was like, dude, you want to try to redeem yourself through my podcast? Yeah. And he's yeah. just like, uh, he's like, um, God, what'd he say? He's just like, I think it might be too much for you, bro. And I was like, what? <laughs> what does that even mean, right? <laughs> this is like, he might have blocked you because I just checked. He's, he's still up. He's still up there. Oh, he probably blocked me. Nice. <laughs> I didn't say anything bad either. I was a nice guy. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, why he wouldn't block me. I was probably a little less uh, tactful. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's great that you you helped out. Definitely. That's, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I know the cool. ranger over there. That's Ranger Dawson, correct? Uh, that, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, he is an awesome guy. He's a great guy. He went through a lot of shit uh, when COVID was happening because everybody was coming to the Catterskill Clove. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, man, that was a disaster. And, you know, everybody was just like, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. I'm like, he's the only one. Shut the hell up. Exactly. Exactly right. I think the frustrations Rangers have is, are largely the same as the public. And, you know, the, the ire, you know, not, not that it should be ire, but the, the, the focus there isn't, it shouldn't be on the rain. It's really got to be on our legislators and our, our, our lawmakers to, to get the resources there or to DEC uh, administration to allocate the resources because your boots on the ground people, they're, they're, they're doing what they can. You know, they can't hire more people. They can't, you know, put more gas in their car. That all comes from the budget process and from, from administration. So, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, those, those people deserve our respect, and we need to we need to go to the people um, above them to 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 get the resources we need. Um, Definitely. Yeah, he was a, a funny story about uh, Catterskill. Actually, it was probably it was I'd actually just proposed to my wife. This Congratulations! We we were up on Artist Rock on the Escarpment Trail up there with this people. We were coming down, we we're taking some pictures, and 
th this is before the fun police, before any of this, you know, uh, probably my more, more formative, uh, you know, conservationist years, but uh, there's some girl hula hooping on the precipice of the falls. And I just, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, are you serious? Oh man, no way. It's just stuff like that. You see, it's really the, uh, you know, and that was, uh, yeah, that was right after they added the, uh, the parking lot at the, the top of the falls there, uh, right after they improved that area. So they just made it, made it, made it more accessible, but, uh, yeah, hula hooping on the top. I'm like, you, 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 that's a ex, ex, express uh, ticket to the Ranger reports right there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that area is is absolutely insane. Definitely. Um, I've seen. Uh, well, I can't say I, I've seen it over the internet, but like I I go up there at the smartest times, early in the morning or late at night, where everybody not on yeah. the weekends, but on the weekends, you know, like I went up uh, to Catterskill falls and you know over the weekend i think it was july 4th i knew they got that got destroyed i heard yeah. so much i saw so much so i went down and i started cleaning stuff up at one of the parking areas my oh. god I, I did five or six trash bags yes. and and uh i saw dawson of course and he's i know him through search and rescue and he's an awesome guy and you know we, we were talking a little bit and i'm just like you know you guys are being strung to the last cord and he's like i know i know and i'm just yeah. like feel so sorry for them like they they do so much for us they do and they're one person for a whole freaking like three or well, four counties it's really true i mean like when i was talking to, to to ranger dawson he was saying that i guess hunter isn't really supposed to be his uh his turf uh or maybe it's catskills that isn't supposed to uh, the catskill it's not supposed to but he was saying he's you know because they're actually missing rangers they have vacancies and, and spaces because they just don't have anyone and uh you know it's about about a month and a half ago i'm, I'm going out to, to huckleberry point out there and Lo and behold, his name's right in the register, local ranger, you know, and I'm like, geez, this guy's got to be, he's got to be everywhere. Yeah, he's definitely got the probably toughest area of that, and uh, Picamoose is really tough, but I got to admit, Catterskill Falls and the Platte Clove area. Uh, now, did, they, um, did they close off, is that a permanent closure of the lower parking lot at Catterskill? Uh, that is a permit-only area for, uh, I believe, like, it's from March to, to October. Okay. Yeah, because that's always that's the way I take up to to my parents' place in Hunter, and it's always I mean when there were people parking there, I mean it was just you got to go you know people on the road, people taking pictures. I mean it's just a matter of time before someone got gets run over. You know, truck coming down that hill there, like it's <laughs> you got yep. a good head of, a good head of speed. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah that's it's unfortunate, but you know, God, the pictures I I used to see down in um the Picamos area of people like grilling right on the side of the oh, the, the creek. And then leaving the grills there. I'm just like, the hell's your problem? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just, I, I mean, I remember when I did that cleanup down in the Catterskill area, I had, I was sitting there cleaning up and all of a sudden like a van comes out and like five or six people come out and they got like those uh, takeout trays, like sure. six of them and every person. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, this is, this is huge. Affair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they, you know, they asked me, in in a, in a foreign language where the rat's hole is and i'm like if, you, if you're familiar you know where rat's hole is down the catterskill area and i was just like i don't really know i don't i don't live here <laughs> but i was just like wow i'm just like you brought that all the way up here and you're probably not going to throw that away i'm just uh, like they're not packing it out no it's gonna be back there yeah but i mean that's why that's why you know we give big thanks to the rangers and the dc officers and stuff like that that help out during these times absolutely absolutely um, and we ask and we say thank you to the adirondack fun police too <laughs> well, whatever whatever we can do to help that's that's what we're here for and, and a couple laughs along the way too hopefully so we just went over my next question which was funny stories so that was was a pretty good story but yeah. uh i mean the jeep incident has got to be phenomenal too <clears throat> the, the jeep was the jeep really was um i mean just one of those things you're back there you know you you, you put yourself in a situation, you know, you park at the lodge, you get that first, you know, a couple miles under your belt. You're just getting back to the wilderness. You know, you're on a hike and there's a Jeep rolling up the Jeep trail. I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, just a wild image. Um, you know, I don't know if someone left the gate unlocked or how that works, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, uh just, uh, that was, that was a crazy one. Um, that was, it was, that was before we really had a major following. So I was almost more of a spectator for that one. You know, a lot of it, a lot of the little things, I mean, we're talking about leaving grills in the woods. I, I had someone send me a picture of uh, a, a, a probably a, a three, four hundred dollar Weber grill in, in a backwoods campsite just left there. And I'm like, well, 
what one, I don't know how they got it back there, you know, but but you know, I I I don't know to this day if someone went back there and got it because it was a nice grill. It was actually up on a crane pond on uh in Warrensburg. I, I think someone had lugged it up there. So uh it doesn't surprise me they didn't get it back down. That's pretty steep up there, but uh you know, things like that, or uh, you know, we had a guy uh who who live streamed him confronting another guy hitting golf balls into the Cascade Lakes. Oh. You know, it's got, <laughs> Just, just this absurd behavior. Like what, what, you know, what, what goes through people's heads? Really, really mind blowing stuff. Uh, we, we, we touched on earlier, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that we, we turned into, you know, memes or, or merch designs. And, and that's, that's a lot of fun. It allows us to, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, it, it is, it, there are serious violations and they are, you know, criminal, many of them, but, you know, if we can have a laugh about them, it, you know, it makes us feel a little better about it. it helps get the messaging out there about, you know, why these things shouldn't be done. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all been, it's, it's all, I, I try to take, take the approach, you know, to, to keep everything fun and, and kind of light, even though some of this underlying subject matter can be kind of heavy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's funny stuff. Like it's, it's just great that we can, like you said, take these serious moments, turn them into funny moments and then make education about it. Exactly. exactly. I mean, what the heck, why not? So any, any scary stories, like you, you ever get any, you sound like you get a lot of messages. Anybody send you a message, like we're in distress, help out. Nothing, no like um, rescues in progress. I mean, my, my first call would be 911 if that ever happened. I don't, I don't want that on my conscience. But, um, you know, uh, probably some of the more, I guess, shocking things that people who, um, you know, you're familiar with the trap dike up on Mount Bolden? Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. So, so you know, people, it's obviously, it's, it's, it's more challenging than a hike, but maybe not quite a, a rock climb, I guess. I, I've never done it myself, to be honest. Um, but, you know, people that that get themselves and I think a lot of it's uh, fueled by social media where people yep. want to they see something they want to repeat. I think you mentioned like that earlier where people, you know, it's kind of like a monkey see monkey do attitude. Um, but, you know, people, whether it's the trap dike or, or, or winter hiking or anything, people just doing things unprepared. I think that's probably the the, 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 the scariest thing we come across. Um, you know, the example I go back to is I was hiking, hiking Phelps in late winter. Um, and there's a group of two guys, no, no, yeah, two guys, three guys coming up the side of the trail. They're not on the monorail. They're not on the icy part of the trail. They're off the side. They're post holding up to their hips with every step. And, you know, that, that alone is, is concerning, but he's got <laughs> for his water. He's got a, a gallon milk jug full of some blue liquid tied to his belt loops with twine. And, <laughs> I mean, I was like, you serious? Like. It was just just mind blowing. So, you know, that's not even so much a, a fun police thing, but that, that's just like some of the stuff that you know any any person can see out there. Um, you know, and that's just stresses the again stresses the importance of education, whether it's leave no trace or just you know looking out for your own skin. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen pictures, you know, of the, of the trap. Like that's a serious area. I got a bit. Um, no, I'm sorry to swear, but don't fucking around in that area. You're not kidding. You, you one, one step up in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've had people, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I don't own a dog. You know, I grew up with dogs. I don't own a dog. I, I get people like to hike with their dogs. Um, but some people get their dogs in some tough situations. And I know there's been a few instances of people take the dogs up the trap dike and, you know, it's, I, I don't, may, maybe your dog can do it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like a great idea to me, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, just some, you know, I can only imagine I'd put myself in the, in the shoes of a, Imagine you're a ranger and you got to call for a, for a rescue in the trap dike because someone, their dog is stuck up there. It's, you just got to shake your head, you know? That's when I would get like five or six helicopters in there. Like, get it out quick. Right. <laughs> like, no, humans, yeah, will we'll give us like three or four hours, but dog, get as many people up there as you can quiet fast. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's that, that trap dike is, is no joke. I mean, I've no seen joke. pictures and that's, that's the thing is like people, like you said, monkey see, monkey do. Um, you know, I've seen that. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. But, you know, I have experienced insane climbs up similar areas like like Platte Clove and, you know, Catterskill area. And you go from bottom to top of Catterskill. It's, it's a challenge. It's just yeah. wet and slimy. And Even with the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the trap dike is one of those places that people are like, oh, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, look at my pictures. And then, right. you know, you're you're 300 feet from the top of Colden and there's that one spot where you know like it, it almost requires like a jump and a hook yeah 
And they're just like, what do I do now? And I'm just like, oh my God, someone's caught up there again. Yep. It, it, it perennially happens. I, I'd say, you know, whenever I open up the Ranger reports on Adirondack Almanac or something, or the DEC press releases, I'm like, you know, there's probably a 25% chance there's a trap like rescue in here. It, it, it just seems like it, it's, it's constant. Yeah. It's, it's like I said, it's a no, no fuck around zone. That's, but, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's uh those are some good, good stories, man. That's, that's crazy. I'm, I'm glad you're, you're helping out. I'm glad it's taken off, man. Like, I, I yeah. can't believe, like, I'm like, I, the one time I was talking, you know, to my wife, I'm like, look at this guy. I'm like, this guy's cool. He's helping out the the thing. And I go look at your screen. I'm like, wow, he almost 4,000 followers. Yeah. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. And then I look at your, your page. I'm just like, he's got all the stuff. I like kicking Karen's making memes. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're not alone out there. There's, there's many more of us. Yeah. So good. Good. Um. So let's let's talk about the the merch. Yeah. You just started this. So tell me about the merchandise. Yeah. So so the merch. So I, I'd always been, I'd been selling patches and stickers for a while as a way to kind of supplement this and, and give me some resources to to keep everything going. Um. And you know, the, everyone loves a patch. Everyone loves a sticker. But it was something I, I was doing it myself with a Google form and mailing it out. And I was just like, I can't. You know, it's it's, it's it got to the point where it was a lot to keep track of. Um. And I want to take it one step further. I'm like, you know, if we can do, we can do memes, we can do graphic t-shirts, you know, we can, we can have some other fun with stuff uh, with, with this kind of stuff. So I had some work with some graphic designers and had some things put together and uh, came up with, we got five different designs. You know, we got the, the Jeep, we've got, uh, you know, the Karens, we got, we got some, we got some fun stuff. Uh, and uh, we also had the, the fun police logo on some things and, you know, some, some t-shirts, some hoodies, uh, stickers, some other fun stuff. And uh what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take t- of the of the proceeds. I'm going to take 10% and kind of uh, on a rotating basis try to divert that to some lesser known Adirondack charities. So you know we're looking at people have suggested the Loon Conservancy. People have suggested Lean to Rescue. You know everyone knows about the Mountain Club. You know I, I I love the Mountain Club. I think the Mountain Club does a really good job. Um, you know I think they're worthy of people's donations. But you know there's so many organizations out there. Um, in the Adirondacks or, or in, in New York or across the country that that do really good work, really important work that maybe don't get get the attention or, or, or resources that they you know that they that they could get. Um, so you know if I can direct some attention to them and, and send a little money their way and, and have a little bit of fun at the same time, you know that's 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 the goal. It's perfect. You know I I am thinking the same way as you. You know I I of course you know I got to do this Zoom. I got to pay for Zoom microphone stuff like that. Exactly. Yep. After, you know, if, if people, you know, I got my, my sponsor who I love, Sarah, you're awesome. You're great. Thank you. Um, after a certain amount uh, of the year, that the rest of that money that everybody donates is going to go to another donation in the Catskill. So oh, nice. That, yeah. That's, you know, the, the, you gotta, you gotta keep the whiskey budget and the beer budget. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's fair, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to, to, to give back and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe some other people latch on and spread out some donations too. And it's uh, a snowball effect, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So uh, I think that's our, our conclusion. So once again, look them up on Instagram, ADK fun police, awesome place that you can learn and have fun. And also, you know, make some good laughs about some serious stuff that, should be taken seriously and you know we can make a laugh about it and then hopefully expose the idiot that's doing it (laughs) (laughs) and then just like hunter the guy's gonna apologize and then not apologize and so thank you mike for joining us tonight on inside the line a lot of fun yeah yeah i mean i'm i i wish you luck hopefully sometime when i go up to uh the adirondacks i haven't been up there in a while but uh I'll, i'll get to hike with you at one of the smaller peaks with a beautiful view yeah, man. Let, 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 let me know. And, and you everyone have me on again, let me know. I'm sure we'll always have something to talk about. Hell yeah. If something else goes on fire. We'll get that on there right away. Exactly. <laughs> um, once again, thanks scenic route guiding for sponsoring us. Uh, I'd like to thank donors again. Once again, everybody's donated to the, to the show. Um, thank everyone who's listening. I had a great time with Mike. I had a great time talking about memes and, and times in the Adirondacks and the Catskills. So I'm glad that he, uh, he's probably should make it the New York parks police or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a staff for that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. You got to go over to Watkins Glen and stuff like that. That'll be fun. <laughs> Subscribe on any platform. I'm pretty sure you can. I got them on all flat pat, yeah, platforms. Look me up on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I got look up inside the line, of the Catskills on any one of those platforms. And once again, look up ADK fun police, check them out. Awesome page, buy some of their merch and then 
keep buying some of the merch and the money will go to donations. So good, good job, Mike and the Adirondack Fund Police. Thank you for everything. Thank you. All right, man. Have a good night and uh, catch you later, hopefully. That's good, man. Look, look forward to listening to the episode. I, th- I think it went well and I think we'll get, uh, we'll get some good, uh, good lessons. Damn straight. Damn straight.